Hobby Farm Guys here, back with another episode. I am Steve. And I'm Brian. And I'm Eric, the guy you can't see. In today's episode, we'll look at 10 farm fence styles you should consider for your hobby farm. Here we go. So we recently put out a video on developing a fencing plan for your hobby farm, where we talked about some important things to consider regarding fencing. Uh, we'll put a link to that in the description. But in that video, we promised to follow up by looking at some of your fencing options. We'll look at some common options as well as a couple you may not have considered and review why they may or may not work for you in your situation. So barbed wire is a traditional type of fence. It's easy to find in farm supply stores and it's relatively inexpensive. Now barbed wire fences are made of two or more strands of smooth galvanized coated steel wire twisted together with two or four barbs spaced every four to five inches. Now this can be a difficult type of fence to work with and can be dangerous to animals that get caught in it, particularly horses. Barbed wire works through simple aversion. Animals come to associate the fencing with painful pricks and learn to stay away from it. While it works fairly well for confining relatively docile animals in large spaces, it can be easily breached by a large aggressive animal and does nothing to keep out deer and other wild marauders. In some states, barbed wire is the only legal fence to protect you from liability should your livestock escape. So woven wire is another common choice for most livestock. It consists of multiple horizontal heavy gauge wires with vertical stays woven in. Right? It comes in different heights and with different size openings based upon which animal you're trying to contain. It can be used to contain most animals. Uh, it's durable and relatively attractive. So woven wire uh, Fences are fairly popular, but they can sag over time, particularly if you have a large animal that's leaning over trying to graze on the other mm -hmm. side. Right? For this reason, it's most common to run a strand of electric wire just above that top of the fence to discourage this habit. Uh, they can also require high maintenance and restretching, uh, tightening staples if the animals can push up against them. Um, so again, an electric wire uh, in front of that can prevent this, thereby lowering that maintenance required. Now, while a woven wire fencing is made using strong connections of twisted wire to create each square, welded wire fencing is less durable because it's constructed by welding pieces of wire together to create squares. This is not a fence that will contain a really strong animal trying to get out. It is primarily for protecting gardens and trees from hungry animals or, or enclosing small animals like rabbits or chickens. An exception to this would be cattle or hog panels, which are strong welded wire fence and is used to enclose small areas due to the cost. High tensile fences are becoming some of the most popular types of fences used. These fences utilize special wires that are stretched at high tension, making them extremely strong, and they have a life expectancy of up to 50 years with minimal maintenance. Initial construction costs can be high, and sometimes special equipment or know-how is needed, but it's perhaps the most economical and trouble-free fence if you spread it out over the life of the fence. Right? And while aesthetically pleasing and great for horses, animals like pigs, sheep, or goats, even cattle, will, they'll learn to push through that fence if you don't also electrify it. Yeah, and because of their expense, cable fences are used primarily for confinement areas such as holding pens, feedlots, and corrals. Cable fences consist of steel wire cables stretched from one anchor post to the next. Now there's no limit to the number of cables used, but a six cable fence is typically used for large animals. Uh, spacing between the cables depends on the type of livestock being combined. Electric fences are widely used in many hobby farm operations because they can be a safe, effective, and inexpensive means of permanent or temporary fencing if constructed properly and energized with the right controller for the area confined. Right? Keep in mind, it's more of a psychological barrier than an actual physical barrier for animals. If an animal wants to run through a wire or net that's not stretched, it can do so, uh, causing damage to itself and the fencing. So high tensile or braided lines prove to be more difficult for an animal to penetrate, but they can still fail if they lose current. So often electric wire fencing is used in conjunction with other types of fencing. Um, proper construction is going to be critical to minimize shorts and grouting issues. Yeah, there's several options for electric fencing. Uh, aluminum, stainless steel, and high tensile wires conduct electricity better for longer distances, but they're going to be less visible to the livestock. Poly tape or poly wire is more visible, but tends to wear and fray. Uh, electric netting is also available. 
Now poly tape and net fencing are often used as temporary fencing to divide pasture areas for rotational grazing, but generally should not be relied on as a permanent perimeter fence. While often the most economical of the fencing types, electric fences are susceptible to failure if power is interrupted, and they can shock people and pets as well as livestock and predators. Wooden fencing is a great option if you're looking for a fence as a landscaping feature. If you need a nice perimeter fence or if you're containing mostly livestock. All right, there are multiple wooden fence types to choose from. You've got post and rail, split rail, picket, wood panel, and a bunch of other ones. Uh, wooden fencing, however, is expensive and it requires regular upkeep in the form of painting and replacing uh, pieces that are weathered or split. And it's possible for animals to break those boards and even posts, uh, particularly as they start to get older. Uh, sometimes scrap lumber or pallets can be used uh, to lower the cost, though you'll generally sacrifice some of those aesthetic qualities as well. Yeah. Now when synthetic fencing hit the market in the 1970s, it had a reputation for failing or looking shabby after a few years in the sun. But the synthetic fencing has improved tremendously and now often comes with a lifetime guarantee against discoloration, rusting, peeling, rotting, or splintering. Now there's many types of synthetic fencing, PVC, vinyl, or high tensile polymer rails. Synthetic fencing is highly visible and somewhat flexible, leading many to consider it a safe material for housing livestock. But it's also expensive, and it is the most frequently used for horses and exotic animals like llamas, alpacas, or emus in suburban environments. Right. So a hedgerow is a line of closely spaced shrubs or sometimes trees planted and trained to form a barrier or to mark the boundary of an area. Once common, hedgerows have largely disappeared to support large-scale agricultural production. For those willing to devote the space to a hedgerow and the time to maintain it, you'll find you get not only a fence, uh, but a windbreak, right, a noise buffer, a beautiful backdrop capable of producing food, increased privacy, erosion control, water conservation, as well as providing much-needed wildlife and pollinator habitat. And the final option to discuss today is an unusual one, the haha. -ha. It's a recessed landscape design element that creates a vertical barrier while preserving an uninterrupted view of the landscape beyond. The design includes a turfed incline that slopes downward to a sharply vertical face, which is typically a masonry retaining wall. Now, ha-has have been used in landscape design to prevent access to a garden by grazing livestock, for example, without obstructing any views. Like a hedgerow, you're going to sacrifice more area to this system, but you retain the views uninterrupted by traditional fencing. So there you have it. Ten options for your fencing needs on your hobby farm. What do you think? Let us know by leaving us a comment. Until next time, happy hobby farming. Bye-bye. Howdy y'all, it's Eric from the Hobby Farm Guys. If you enjoyed our video, please leave us a message. We'd love to hear from you all. Also, would you please like our video and subscribe to our channel? We'll upload new videos every Thursday and you don't want to miss one.